In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an access switchboard or main menu. And what this is, is just a simple form like we see here. And this is the first form that a user is going to see as soon as they open up this database. It's a launch pad where you have probably lots of different buttons that you can click on and it launches some of the other different forms that you've already created in your database. It's a way of hiding away from naive users the technicalities of the database. So straight away they're presented with a point and click interface to get all of the different resources that they need. In this example that I have here, I've got lots of different buttons, some to add units into this freezer control system, take units away to create a new batch. I can click on a button there. I've also got some buttons here to click open reports of different types so they can be printed out and other types of operations that you can have, you can easily launch different queries from uh, the main menu or the switchboard. To begin, I'm just going to close this example down and I'm going to go to the Create tab. To remember the main switchboard or menu, it's always just another form in Access. It's a form that's probably not going to be uh, created or linked to any particular table or data, but it's a form nonetheless. So I'm going to go to the Create tab and I just want a blank form. So I click on the blank form icon and straight away I'm into the view of this blank form. I want to go into the design. So I'll flick down here to the design view. This gives me the canvas and from here I can start adding on different buttons. The place to find the different buttons is in the design tab. I can then move over here into the controls group and find the button icon. Click on the button and click and draw a button onto the canvas. As soon as I let go of the button on the canvas, it's obvious to access that I need this to be a trigger of an event. And it sets up a command button wizard for me to actually define what that event is. In the categories, I will pick form operations and I will pick open form. But there's a range of different categories and actions there I can choose from. I'll click on next for the different choices that I've made and I can click on any of the different forms that exist already in my database that I've already created. Click on next, uh, open the form and show all records is fine. Click on next and I've got this text or picture choice. Picture is good if I want to have a very small button if I'm tight on space but a text is fine otherwise. So I can say add item to add item to the freezer because that's the form that I've picked. Click on next the last ah, step in this wizard is it gives me an option to change the actual command name of the command or control, which is the button. This is for VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. If I'm going to actually do some of that coding in the background of Access, I can think about this and think about changing the name. Otherwise, I just generally leave it the way that it is. It can always be changed later. So I'm going to ignore that, click on Finish, and there's my button. Let's run this form. I'll click on View. And I can see the button there. I can click on it and it should open the form that I asked uh, Microsoft or Access to open. So I can just simply close that form. And that's the way the uh, main launch, main menu form will work. I can click on a button. Form opens above the main form. As soon as I close it, the main form is still there in the background. Different things then I can do to tidy up this main form. I can obviously add more buttons to it. But one thing I need to remove is the record selector. I've also got this navigation bar at the bottom because it's not connected to any one table in Access. There's no point in having that. I can put a label up at the top to kind of say and brand what the actual database is about. And I can add in more buttons, more groupings and so on. So let's take a, take a look at some of those. I'm going to go back into the design view. Straight away, I'm going to select the form by clicking in this square box between the two rulers and putting a little bullet point in there. That will allow me to open up the property sheet and see that I've got the selection type of form. So I'm looking at all the properties of the form. I'll go down to record selectors. At the moment it's set to yes. I want to switch that to no. And navigation buttons. At the moment that's set to yes and I want to switch that to no. Let's take a look at the effect of both of those. So I can see my record selector is gone and my navigation bar is gone. Go back into design. And now I'm going to add some labels in. I can click on a label in here and type in the name of the database and I can do all sorts of formatting on that in the format tab so change the uh, font size possibly and maybe center it as well great I can go back to the design I can keep on adding different buttons to do different operations 
So I could add different reports and so on. If I wanted to add a report, I could just click on the button, add it. Say I want to do a report operation, open a report, and the same process from there on in. Just pick the report that I want to run and finish off that wizard. And that's fine. Another button that works by running a report. There it is. Close down the report. So I'll go back into design for one final message. And that is if I've got lots of different buttons on this canvas or in this form, a good idea is to group buttons of similar functionality together. And the way to do that is in my controls. I could just drop that down, pick the rectangle control. This is really a dumb control in that it doesn't have any functionality of itself. I can just section off different buttons in different rectangles and it focuses the user's attention to different places and tidies the whole form up. At the end of that process, I can click on save and save the actual main form with an appropriate name, whatever I want to call it. Click OK and that form is now saved. And again, I'll refer you back to the main form that I had, which is my switchboard form that I created earlier. So that's an example of a fully functioning form with lots of different buttons. I've also got a quish button there, which is again one of the options that is available to me when I throw on that button and is introduced to the actual button wizard. But in a nutshell, that's how to create a switchboard form.